Hey guys, Dan Kelly, coach of Wise Ocean Pods, and welcome back to an episode of a My Team Review series for the AFLW Fantasy Season. On today's episode, we will be reviewing the what happened in week two. I got to get uh, familiar with the weeks, not the round. So, yeah, week two happened, and I guess we'll just start off with how we went. So, I ended up scoring a fourteen oh three. So, not too bad there. I was pretty happy with the way the team performed overall, um, but probably was behind par by about 30 to 40 points i'll say um a lot of teams scored around that um 1440 1430 area and um yeah definitely probably just missed a few points there but overall moved up quite a hefty in terms of ranking and moved up i think 900 spots i think i was back at 2800 last week so just snuck into the top 2k at 1999 which is a very pleasing number for me because that's actually the year i was born but uh, yeah, a little bit more about me there, but yeah, I'm re really happy with how the team's looking so far. Team value is going very, very well. Um, yeah, hopefully we can continue in this direction and make some heavy movements in the next couple of weeks as things start to develop a bit more. But yeah, let's just start going through, make this a quick one, and go through line by line. So, um, defense will start off with. Ah, uh, sorry. Before I get into line by line, I just wanted to quickly touch on. I guess the round as a whole. Um, there were a lot of, there obviously were some massive, massive scores. Um, you know, Marinoff 191, can't go wrong with that one. You know, Robot on 163 and a, a certain Andy, uh, what's her name? Al Anderson, um, Ali Anderson, 161 as well. So massive scores there. But then there was also quite a lot of low scores. So I did pull up this graphic here from the Facebook page at uh, the fantasy team there. But it isn't fully complete which i'm sure they're aware of but yeah there was some massive scores but there also there wasn't a lot of those medium high scores like obviously only maybe 10 people over uh, over 100 this week so um not so many massive scores so if you had these very unique players that went really really well i'm sure you scored rocket in terms of your ranking so um a bit of an up and down week for sure for sure so the only people that are missing on this on this list, I guess, was uh, Ali Anderson, who scored that 161. And then there was also a Blackburn, who scored a 110 as well, who would have slotted into here. Not sure why they weren't quite weren't, why they weren't on this uh, list, but uh, yeah, a lot of different scores there. But overall, um, very, very exciting round of women's footy there. So now we'll get into the the, the line by line. Um, so defenders first. So Thomas... A little bit disappointing this week with a 67. A time on ground dropped just a little bit. Not sure what the case is there. Just really wasn't getting too involved. Um, was getting... Uh, did it have a little bit of time in the midfield? So a bit of a watch there. Um, honestly, there's no concern for me. Uh, obviously, she's one of the top premiums in terms of defenders. So it's one I'm just going to sort of keep on the side. Not really look at too much. Not worry about the the... I mean, the value as such, um, unless there's something clearly changing and she's pretty dramatically dropping, then I'll have to look at it. But at this point in time, I have no concerns. The only thing I will say, she does have the Western Bulldogs this week, so there is probably a chance that they, the ball won't be in their defensive half as much, so maybe not as much supply for her. Um, but maybe that also mean, frees her up for more plus sixes as they um, try and switch it in the back line to enter the forward 50 a bit more. Who knows? Um so I definitely can see it going both ways. But overall, really happy with her selection so far. Um, she is somehow 47% owned, which is ridiculous. I didn't think that many people had her. But yeah, um, yeah she's going really, really well. Um, Ruby Slasher here is one that's increasingly frustrating at the moment for me. I was pretty hot on trading her out last week because at the end of the day, in my book, she's a favored mid price. So she hasn't increased her value and hasn't really shown much of a potential to increase our output in terms of scoring output so um in my eyes she's a failed mid pricer and i can highly encourage other people to jump off um the thing that's maybe holding her in my side is just the ownership she's not many people are jumping off her just yet still having a, a, a look she's still sort of in that top range of um scorers like not so far behind maybe in the top 20 or so um and if there's a potential that she could increase her scoring output, then maybe it's worth just a look and see. And the other thing is the double game um, coming up in round four. I'd probably hold her till then. We've only got the Brisbane Lions this week. 
which I believe are an easier matchup for defenders. Maybe not. Um, sorry, a tougher matchup for defenders. I just assumed it was a, a lot of supply in there, but it's a tough matchup for defenders. So um, not looking good for her, but hopefully uh, she doesn't a well enough job that she, we can just keep her through that uh, round four and then, yeah probably move her on after that if she's not showing the scoring output that we're looking for. So that's probably my plan with her there. But hopefully she can uh, prove us wrong and be a keeper for us a year. Goldrick continues on her strong form, back to back 70, so really happy with her selection, increasing in price, went over 100k this week. So really, really pleased with how she's traveling. Um, good to see her time up on ground this week as well, so shows that she's going to be... A bit more consistent and i'm not sure what, why the time on ground was a bit lower on that one but uh yeah hopefully she can keep it up especially in a tougher matchup as well so that was very pleasing to see um this week she's got collingwood so another tougher one but then she goes in wait no sorry looking at the wrong team melbourne she got north this week so another tougher game and then goes into Fremantle. so not the greatest run in terms of you know, the rest of the season or even just to her early buy, but I think the the money she's making and obviously being one of the top defending scorers at the moment, uh, yeah, speaks for herself. So I think she's ranked number six currently. So uh, very nice to have her. Hosking, I guess, was a disappointment of the week and probably deserves my negative three. She was nearly my lowest score on field. Um, obviously, traded her in last week, as most of the competition did. Uh, after that massive score she put up in round one in her revenge game. I guess the thing with her is that she played a lot more forward in this game. Um, I can't remember specifically who came back in. Oh, I even have it up here. I think it was um, uh, a Jamie Harkin came in and took some more CBAs from her, even though the numbers don't look too different. But um, you could tell when you're watching the game, she was spending a lot more time forward. So a bit of a... One that you've got to watch, but um, and I have considered trading her out, and she has been very much in my trade considerations. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, she's got Western Bulldogs, so the supply in the forward line should be a lot better to her. Maybe she can get on the end a couple of goals. Um, they were actually looking a lot more damaging with her in the midfield, and she's obviously quite good at tackling. So hopefully, she can get around the ball, get some tackles, and yeah, hopefully, put up a decent score for this this week against the Bulldogs, and then she comes up in the double game uh, round, in round four. So um, while it is a tough matchup against Collingwood and the Brisbane, so two are tougher matchups there, um, you're definitely just playing that on field no matter what, and then I can maybe look to move her on after that. So again, really using these double game rounds to my advantage to be able to hold these certain players and get me through. So yeah, I'm happy to hold her, I think, this week. Uh Dana Finn, awesome to have her. Glad I started her at the start of the year. 77 was beyond what I would have expected. And um, if she can continue to put up that output and continue to be the number one marking player at Colton, then absolutely love it. So she could even be possibly a very nice defender for us for a little while this season. So, yep, she'll probably stick at my... Uh, D5 there for a little while, while I moved Watson onto the bench just because I wasn't sure of her ceiling, and she put up a nice 45, um, I think she would just be a bit of a, a slow burner for my cash generation on the bench there, with not many two other options coming through from my understanding, um, there's a couple here and there, but nothing too amazing, obviously didn't play, yeah, I'm not too keen on paying too much for these sort of bench rookies. So really looking at that 300 to 400k range and really not liking many of the options here. So happy for her to sort of sit there. She made, what, 41k. Um, even if I quickly look up her break-even, a break-even of 29. So she should hit that and make some coin again. So yeah, happy for her to sit there. Moving into the midfield, this is where the big points were this week, and unfortunately, owning half of mine performed. So, Marinoff, 191, very glad to have her as captain. Um, I was very nervous going into this game with obviously uh, Row Bottom going the 163. I had missed her with the VC. I'm kind of glad I didn't have the VC on her at the end because maybe I would have done something stupid and traded in a red dot to get that, but um, I did put the VC on Blackburn on the Friday night. She only put up 110, so I wasn't going to take that. So, very happy with Marinos' one, one, 
one ninety one, um, and is by far my highest captain score I think I've ever had in my fantasy career. I think the second highest score I've had was um, Cherry's one sixty eight in the men's fantasy this year. So bit bit of dif- bit of a difference there, but yeah, well done to Marinoff, and hopefully a lot of people did that. Row bottom, she needs a shout out as well. She had the first triple double in the AFLW fantasy world so that is just amazing for what she can do uh, i'm sure it won't be the last time we see her do that um for sure so good to see that these high priced uh, mid price sorry these high priced and premiums are really paying off this time of year uh, and blackburn did really well 110 really happy with that i'm um, glad to see she got into the one uh, the hundreds and making some coin and increasing her value so that's exactly what i wanted and um, yeah, hopefully she can continue that against the easy opponent again this week. So, um, yeah, whole plan's going well. The second half is where my sort of mid midfield sort of failed, which um, I guess we'll start with Goody. Goody, 34, was by far uh, the one, the writing was on the wall, and I think I said it in my t- previous video, was um, she's not playing the midfield role against the Western Bulldogs means the ball's not going to be in the back half, so maybe the supply wasn't there. So maybe it was the fact that I just hadn't seen enough from the likes of a window to trust her to be on field. I didn't see the ceiling coming, but yeah, definitely it now throws a bit of a spanner in the works because now we've got to try and play a bit of rookie roulette with, okay, do we field Goody, do we field Breed, or do we field Window, or, you know, a Sim or something like that, whoever else, everyone else has. So um, definitely going to be interesting in the next coming weeks. But yeah, definitely should have uh, picked that one. That wasn't going to be as good of supply for her. But yeah, that was definitely a very disappointing game from what you would think from a goodie there. And the other one was Mackenzie here. Back off an 81 to a 52 and pretty much killed all her cash generation. So she's highly up in my um, trade out plans. I thought that the tag on Conti would have provided her more points, but she just didn't seem to tackle or anything like that in this game which is a little bit disappointing, you know, if she hit like another 70 or 80, then definitely could have looked at held, holding her, but I think I'm losing too much points in the midfield now, you know, that's, for everyone that sort of started with a four deep premium midfield, they're getting 60 points on me easily, I think, just from that one selection there, so I think I need to move her on and get someone else in just to provide that, uh, to stop that bleeding and if not try and gain some points back very quickly so i'm going to take that 124k and run with it this week i think um unless something drastic changes at teams tomorrow night but yeah i think it would um, i think she's gone for me very disappointing there breed um what can i say she just did really well well um i thought the news of Bates being out would have provided her a little bit more additional points but didn't seem to really happen her role didn't really change too much she still had around that 50 percent cbas a little bit time, less time on ground so i would like to see her get up to that you know 80 percent time on ground but um she's young so i understand uh, she's hit goals in both games, so she's playing a lot of that half-forward midfield role, so definitely providing plenty of cash for us. So happy for her to sit on my bench, but definitely could be considered as a, uh, a fieldable option um, for Goody there. Morfit is another one, which where I hurt. Um, I, I sort of predicted that she would go better this week, and I'm sort of going back on my word that she. I had hoped that she could get back to her best pretty quickly, but um, seeing that game, I don't know if it's possible. She's had a lot more hitouts, like, like exactly I said. I think she had a lot of an easier game in that sense, but then she didn't really get the job done around the ground. Only the tender spoils, uh, two two tackles and zero marks, which is very unlike her. So uh, I'm in a bit of two minds here, whether it's uh, better to cash her out and move her on. And, and you know get another rock a ruckman or and use that money elsewhere on the field um or just holding her assuming that she's going to be back in form very quickly and you know everyone will jump on at some stage so i think in my current thinking i'm going to be a bit more aggressive because you do have the three week three trades a week um so yeah might look to trade around this week but i'll show you my trades very very shortly and uh, odell i should we talk about Odell being the rookie of the week, if not the season so far. 60 and 76, absolutely killing it. Obviously, that 60 was an injured 60, so that could have been much bigger 
in that game. But yeah, 91% time on ground is awesome for her, someone her age. Um, and putting up a 76 is awesome as a bench rookie. And definitely could be a potential to come on field. I know a lot of people looking at this week, including myself. Um, I think I'm probably in a bit of a nicer scenario where I've got a Morpher who is drastically underperforming and her break-even is skyrocketing. Whereas a lot of people are considering moving off a, you know, um, an Edmonds or uh, what are the other Ruckmans? Uh, what's her name? You're not moving off a Frederick, but like a, um, oh, go away. And Allen, for example, she dropped a 60, so people are looking to jump off her a little bit. With our cash generation sort of stalling, a Wales, if anyone that started that. Kelly has a bit of an underpriced one as well. Um, I don't think you'd jump off that one just yet. She's still making lots of coin. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of different players going at hand at the moment with uh, O'Dow potentially coming on field. Uh, but then we'll finish off with the forward line. So Kate Hoare did really, really well. 83, I'm happy with that. I think she wasn't quite the top scorer of this round for the forwards, obviously. Um, was she? I can't actually remember. Um, how do I go this week? Weak points. There we go. So Friswell... Just pipped her and same with Randall. So obviously, um, non-surprisingly, these two are the most probably talked about options as a forward line at the moment. So uh, yeah, shows you why. So really happy with Hoare. She, you know, just did what Hoare things does. She was on track for something pretty massive, but I think slowed down quite dramatically in the second half. So no, no worries there for me. Uh, Breed back-to-back fifty ones is starting to become a bit of a concern. Um, just not finding much of the ball. Whether I don't know if it's just Richmond not being very competitive at the moment, and the supply to her is not great. Um, she also hasn't hit the scoreboard, which doesn't help. But um, we can't fully rely on these these full forwards always hitting the scoreboard, right? We gotta, you know, get the get the hands on the ball and get those extra points where they can. So back to fifty one is a bit of a concern, but I, I still think I'm happy to hold there. Um, Looking at her run, I guess, as a forward. Richmond, Sydney, Carlton. So two different decent matchups and then goes in to the uh, double game week. So again, I can reassess after that game. So probably another three-week play for me there. Um, I probably should have touched on what my trades were last week because they did change a little bit. So I traded in Hoskin for Lutkins. Um, what else were they? It was too good to Sheriff. And then it was also Smith to Huntington. So I ended up going Sheriff over the likes of a, a Hodder. Um, I think the the cash-wise difference wasn't enough for me to get a Huntington, who I was pretty keen on as a bit of a cash rookie, which in the end looked like it was going to be the right move. I was pretty keen for it when I heard that Bates was out. Sheriff was going to get more points in the midfield. Everything was looking pretty good. She was on track for, you know, a 60-70. She, she was on at 51 at um, three-quarter time. Traveling really well. You know, getting... I think she was the highest CBA taker at Hawthorne on the day. Tracking really well, and I thought it was a master stroke, but then injury hit and got instant karma. And now she's been ruled out for... Uh, I can't even actually say. She's ruled out, ruled out for uh, as a TBC at the moment. So she's out for an extended period of time. So... That's another forced trade for my team, and I'm going to have to be pretty creative to what I can do with her, whether I pay up for the likes of Friswell or Randall, or I maybe cash her out and take her down to another uh, um, a bench rookie and bring Huntington on, because I, 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 that's a definitely an option I've considered. So uh, very unfortunate there that I did trade in Sheriff and did copy the injury, because it, when I saw what H uh, Hodder did with like a 40, I think it was, um, uh, a 43, yeah, I was I was pretty cheering that I had gone to a a sheriff instead. Just I, the main reason I went to a sheriff was just the the role of security, playing the midfield. I thought her my floor was higher than what a hotters were. Um, so yeah, but things happen to fancy. That's unfortunate, but luckily we have three extra trades, uh, three trades, so um, not too worried at the moment. Uh, Pauga and Tripodi did really well. Um, obviously Tripodi. 68 awesome um definitely wasn't expecting that especially in a low time on ground which is ridiculous but yeah she's definitely going to be one that stays in my field for a little while longer making good cash pounder is maybe one that i could look at moving on eventually she doesn't quite have 
that amazing role. She's playing more of a half forward and not really pushing into the stoppages as much as I would like. But um, as a, a 42 in the forward line, I can definitely take that at the moment. Um, it's really not super far away from a lot of the top line scorers. So I'll take it for now. And yeah, Huntington out of 51, awesome cash generation went up. Uh, 78k this week and will continue to rise. So glad I grabbed her and I already spoke about window enough there. Uh, jumped up 136k this week. Awesome to think. Uh, I was probably very close to trading her out to a Sime, which uh, just quickly, Sime did not perform very well with a 44. Did still went up 89k, so if you did trade her in, you, you're not too concerned there. Um, I'd still be holding again this week, but yeah, the roll was still there. She just didn't really get the points, I don't think. I think a lot of her tackles just didn't count because of, um, you know, the, the opponent was able to get the ball out, so bit unfortunate there. I think she'll be fine. But what am I doing this week, I guess, is what where we should lead into. So, um, obviously, shuffled around a few things. But I'm pulling the trigger, I think, this week and getting rid of Ali Morfitt. Um, I think, in terms of the way I think about it, in terms of points on field, Odor, Odell or Odor, however you say it, is pretty much a like for a like for Morfitt at the current point. Like, I'm not expecting 76s every week. I understand that's probably a bit overs. A 65, I would be happy with, I think. Um, she's shown that she's more than capable of scoring quite well. She's maybe not the best tap out, hit out Ruckman. Um, and I think she may get a little bit um, stiff this week against the likes of, um, what's her name, Bella, I think it is. Um, she's a very good hit out Ruckman, so she may not get as many hit outs this week, but hopefully she can do a job around the field and get plenty of points that way. So if she can break even with Morphe on the field, then that's um, awesome because it is about 400k difference now. Um, so I'm happy to pull that trigger, I think. And I'm bringing in this um, very cheap Ruckman at Brisbane. I think it's just a bit of a cash pull. I did consider just bringing in a red dot. Um, and not having any cash generation there just so I can play the VCZC game sort of thing. Um, but which is definitely a possibility that I could still do. Um, I'll, I'll still do a bit more information on what's going to happen with uh, this Ruckman in, in particular, or if there's any other Ruckman that you know pops ahead up. But um, I thought, thought just as a bit of a cash generation, she has a break even up at like 20 or something like that, getting a bit more of a split time in the Ruck um, as. The likes of Smith wasn't favoured as much. So, yeah, 31% as in the ruck contest. So, um, don't mind her there. That's my thoughts. But I definitely could trade in a red dot. Sheriff has gone to a rookie bench option in uh, Annabelle Kivet. Um, I looked at her last week and I was pretty close to pulling the trigger. But um, ended up going with a Huntington instead who didn't quite gob as much cash, which is a little bit unfortunate. So I'm thinking I'm going to pull the trigger this week. She still has a low break even in Black 20, I think. So really targeting those low break evens. She's gone back to back sort of 50, so happy with how she's traveling. Um, at the end of the day, she's going to be on the bench for me. I don't, I don't think I'm going to trust her on field just yet, even though she has been scoring well. Um, she's playing more of a halfback role, so very similar to probably like a Huntington, um, getting a lot of those plus, uh, plus sixes in the back line. So... Weirdly enough, she's uh, listed as a, a midfielder in the uh, AFL app, but then listed as a forward in the uh, fantasy game and then plays as a defender. So she's just playing it all over the field. So um, happy to pick her up and just yeah provide that cash generation. And then finally, I've moved on McKenzie in the midfield and I'm just bringing in uh, Ali Anderson this week. Um, the main reason for this, and it's not something that I would typically do, and it goes against my philosophies that I don't want to pay for everyone, someone that's about 110 or whatever it is. Um, so similar to what Marinoff, the reasoning I started off Marinoff is the captain option, particularly next week. I I really want a good captain option for the first double game week, and by far I think she's the best option to have. Um, just looking at this, I I could have gone to Blackburn as a double, but she has a two harder matchups to come. So I thought if I can get to an, uh, an Anderson or if I can get to, you know, a, a, what's her name, a Benici, then that's definitely the preferred option, being the two nicer matchups. So um, I've gone the cheaper option, uh, sorry, the, the more expensive option in Anderson because I think she possesses the higher ceiling. And I'm a little bit concerned with what Benici 
does with the likes of Bree Davy back. Um, Davy had her first hit out this week and only put up a 61. Had some decent time on ground, but she really didn't look like her, you know, herself. So I think she's had a bit of a cider now and definitely could take some points off of the likes of Benici in the coming week. So bit of a bit of a one to watch there for me. Um, obviously, Anderson put up many, many points on top of these two scores. So I think I'm happy to pay up for that one and just take the C on her next week. So also provides a lot more depth in terms of the midfield. I think when I look at it in terms of what I've traded out and what I've traded in, I think I've broke even, if not added points on on site, on field, sorry, on, I say on site. Um, like I said, O'Dow hopefully breaks even what Morfitt, can, what Morfitt was going to do with around that 60, 65 range. Um, Anderson will be anywhere from like 40 points extra to 70 points extra, so it's a bit hard to tell. I'll just say 40 for now because Mackenzie was probably that 70 player. Hopefully Anderson can be a 110 player for me. Uh, and then I've traded off Sheriff, who was a forced trade, but I'm probably losing 20 points in this this line anyway, so in this particular field. So hopefully it's a net positive in terms of points on field. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'm pretty confident with how the team looks this week. Obviously things may change, but I think I'm pretty okay with how things are. Um, just going to have a quick look at VCs and Cs. Again, I could go with a, a Blackburn against the Eagles on the Thursday night. Got to remember there is a Thursday night game this week, so that kicks off tomorrow night, straight after the, the teams pretty much. So you've got to be on your toes this week, uh, actually for the remainder of the season, because I believe they all have Thursday night games coming up, even Tuesday night games because of double game stupid and things. So um, could go that way, but... Could also go with Ali Anderson with the VC on the Friday night against Collingwood. Collingwood are a bit of a tougher matchup in terms of midfielders, I believe. Uh, yeah, a bit tougher there. So maybe might not look there as much. Um, so yeah, really just searching for that ceiling. I don't have a black a red dot at the moment anyway, so I, I'm not really playing this VC game too much. I think I'm just going to back in Marinoff with whoever she's playing. She's playing Hawthorne this week. Pardon me. Um, who are okay matchup? Uh, where are they? Why can't I see them? Oh, there they are. So an easy matchup. So yeah, more than likely I would just back up Marinoff. You can't really go against her too much. I paid up for her, so I might as well go into her. But I might as well throw the VC on like a a, a, a Blackburn for now, and hopefully she can put up a decent score, but I'm more than likely I won't take that at all. What does Rowbottom have? Rowbottom has the Giants, who are also an easy matchup, I believe. A neutral matchup. All right. All right, but this is probably how we're structuring up. So I actually have pulled the trigger in. I put a Piper window on the field over a goodie just because of the roll, and I think against the Fremantle, the Dockers, we saw against Adelaide, we saw against the... Who did they play the first week? Anyway, they play a very contested game where there's a lot of stoppages, so there's a lot of tackles available, and Piper Window, that is it, ren renowned for what she's doing right now. She's gone back-to-back -back sort of high tackles, so she should get plenty of tackles in this game and hopefully can provide me a bit of a, uh, a luxury score here. Oops, hopefully I didn't show you too much. Um, yeah, I think I'm just happy with that. I think she provides a better ceiling, a better floor, but maybe not as high as a ceiling. Um, so happy to bench Goody there, but obviously still holding her. But yeah, I think that will sort of do it. Obviously extended one. I don't know how I still make these these videos go for nearly half an hour, even though we're talking about, what, 23 players? Um, I, I guess I should probably quickly just touch on some players that I've considered. So um, starting the forward line, obviously Friswell and Randall. If I had the choose one, I was very close to getting Friswell. I like her run a little bit better than Randall's, and I'm concerned about what, what happens with Randall with her role when some of her teammates return. I can't remember exactly the names, but I'm aware that she has some teammates that are coming back into that CBA mix very shortly, so I'd be going Friswell. Um you know, probably not changing your rock line too much in terms of if you've got like an Edmonds, I think you stick with her, you know, play her out into a double game week. I think you'll get a big advantage there. Like myself, I won't have a rock, a Ruckman on the double week game that week. Um, if you got a, a Kelly, I'd definitely hold that as well. She's still making very good coin and putting up decent scores. Um, 
this one's a tough one just because Allen um, obviously dropped the 60 last week, but it was against Stroll, Strom, so I think you back it in again. She's still making some decent coin. I think she'll be okay, so I'll leave her that one there. The only real scenario is I think you're trading out your Ruckman and going to a likes of an o O'Dell or O'Dor, um, is if you have, you know, more foot like myself, um, if you started a goodie, um, who's the other ones? Any other sort of Ruckmans that aren't really performing, like maybe a Wales, like 64, 87 last week, I guess it was against Strom, uh, obviously, uh, what's her name? Matilda here, I can't remember her last name, I can't, I can't pronounce it, um, but yeah, I, there's not many too many scenarios I'll take that risk, it is a very risky move, I must say, there's no, there's every chance that they bring in a second Ruckman and then she loses some points there, so yeah, definitely one that is a bit of a risky play and something that I, I try and strive away from, but I think I'm willing to take the risky move in this case. Uh, midfield, obviously most people are targeting Ali Anderson this week after her big 160 with that double game coming up everyone wants that wants that double game if not Benici is also another one that a lot of people are targeting a uh, bit of a cheaper price so she's a bit more obtainable um so I don't mind her there besides that I don't think there's any mid price that you're looking for realistically I think a lot of the mid price people sort of failed last week so even like a uh, McCarthy only put up a 78 last week but she was still the highest scoring player for Fremantle so I think it was just a tougher game for them particularly so I think she'll bounce back um, still making coins so I wouldn't be trading her out just yet I think she'll be fine against Port Adelaide um, be an interesting watch on Hawthorne if what happens with their midfield mix whether that goes to a Fleming she'd have a bit of an uptick in terms of her um, scoring output, so maybe that was just on the back of having the likes of Bates and Sheriff off for that quarter, so big watch on what's happening there. I think Bates is back this week, so maybe not too much of a change. Um, people are looking at moving up with Conti after that tag game. She potentially probably cops another tag this week, so that's another one you could probably jump off and go to the likes of an Anderson if you, if you really want Anderson. Um, don't mind that. If you're looking for a bit of a cheaper option in terms of um, you know, a bench rookie or you're looking for a cheaper rookie to go to. Um, I was really looking at Madeline here, playing really strong CBA usage at Carlton. Really good points per minute. Um, really strong midfielder, just was everywhere in that game. So definitely don't mind her there. Didn't really look at this one too much. I think this was a bit of a flash in the pan for me. Um, so wasn't there much. But in terms of the defenders, if I scroll back up, um, not really looking at Carney. I know she put up that 101, but I, I'm still a bit concerned with you know her age and her role. Newman, again, another one I'm not 100% sure on. Again, a lot of mixture going on at the, at the Crows at the moment. They're changing a few things up. Like You just see their midfield usage is all over the place at the moment. Like Even a, more, um, a Marinoff wasn't 100% CBAs this week. The one I'd really be targeting if you don't have her is Daisy Darcy. She doesn't need CBAs and she's still putting up plenty of scoring power and providing more coin. Um, obviously, if you don't have Finn, I think she's one that you need to grab and is it a priority. Um, she is just scoring very, very well. Um, who else who was targeting? Gay was pretty strong this week. Um, I think she's had a, a, a a role change heading into the back line a bit more being that main distributor with a good foot skills so another one that I could probably suggest people trading into she's a bit more expensive though so it's a bit more of a, a risky punt but she definitely has the potential to be one of the top defenders but yeah that will finish it off just as a quick recap um yeah I will see you guys next week please leave a like subscribe do all those nice things drop any questions you have in the comments i'll try my best to answer them like i said i'm not the greatest at this thing i'm just probably like the rest of you trying to learn my way and try and apply a lot of my men's fantasy into this and seeing how we go so yeah i'll stop jabbering now i'll see you guys next week have a good one bye